Welcome to Western Trading Post TV. Today is a busy, busy day as we learn about Hopi pottery, trade tokens. We'll be visiting with a rodeo queen and learning about the benefits of horse therapy. Then we're hitting the road and heading to Mesa, Arizona for the Old West Show and Auction. So hold on to your hats and enjoy the ride. up to today? Oh, we're out purchasing some earrings for the high school rodeo contest that's going to be in June. And how has it been being the Arizona High School Junior Rodeo Queen? It's been pretty great. I've had a great experience and I've met a lot of friends <laughs> all over the world. So, Are you going to compete excited. again? Yes, I think I will. Probably my junior year. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. So what are you going to do for the next couple of years then? Probably just focus on my events and practice and try and to get better at them. <laughs> what events are you doing right now? I do barrels, poles, breakaway, and cutting right now. <laughs> and I did not hear anything about team roping. I decided to take a little slight break from team roping since my accident. <laughs> well, well, I heard you ended up dowling your thumb and cutting it off. How, how is the healing process going? It's been pretty great. Yeah. yeah. I have a lot of motion and a lot of feeling back in it. So. And okay. just one of those crazy accidents. I mean, I understand where you're coming from because that happened to me when I was younger as well. And <laughs> I had a great doctor, I think, just like you did. Yes. <laughs> now, what was part of the healing process that you went through? Because when that happens, I know for me, I was very tentative and I was nervous and it took a little bit. What about for you? Uh, my horses, <laughs> yeah. I was. They helped me get through all my fears. And Mom, what do you think I'll about that? Like, oh yeah, my heart dropped. I was like, oh, like she's getting back on to ride again. I'm like, please, yeah. <laughs> please just take care of her. Don't hit her thumb because every time she did hit her thumb, it was it two bad. big alligator tears. <laughs> oh, it was like, oh, yeah. it hurts. So they, um, her doctor, the facility that she went to built a little sleeve that went over her thumb so that when she did ride, that she, if she hit it on anything, it would, uh, it would didn't protect hurt, it. protected it, yeah. yeah. So it was super nice that they had the ability and knew somebody else had cut their thumb off from there before and they already had been through it so they knew exactly what to do and so forth. So made it kind of easier for her path to, to rehabilitate. And keep, kind of keep, kind of keep going. going. Yeah. And then uh -huh. you started kind of riding the horses again and kind of building the courage and going after it. <laughs> And another thing that I saw on social media that you guys did with um, a dear friend of yours, I saw he got into a really bad car accident, mm -hmm. was yeah. at the hospital, and you took one of his horses up to the hospital, didn't you? Yeah, we took it up to Brazo West, and um, it was amazing for both of us. We didn't, I didn't think it was gonna happen the way it did. We took the horse out, and the horse was kind of acting crazy. And then um, they brought Chance out in his wheelchair and he hadn't had really a lot of interaction with all of us. I mean, he kind of knew who we were and uh, we brought Roni over to him, and which is his good horse. And the horse just laid his head right in his lap and we were all, everybody that was there, there was probably 20 or 30 doctors and every, there wasn't a dry eye around. It was. And for you two to do that, I mean, You've done an amazing job with your kids. I mean, look, I'm so proud of you, how you represent our county, our state. You lead by example, and you help others out so much. And I just, I want to thank you guys because it helps encourage others to kind of step up and do the same. And so many people don't realize that the animals 
they know oh, yeah. and they are therapy mm -hmm. and you know if we have to have our horse therapy <laughs> yes. to kind of get over things it's just a blessing that we're able to do that huh right yeah horse therapy is the best <laughs> well, yeah, it definitely is and okay so i i just had to find out all this information and like i said i'm so proud of you we were talking about earrings we have a ton of earrings mm -hmm. and then i was kind of putting some away too i don't know if you see something that kind of catches your eye or do you like i like these i love these oh, those are beautiful those are beautiful those, those are, work are perfect. the ones <laughs> yeah. hey rowdy do you want to come and write these up and we will we'll get these for you guys and you guys can thank donate you. them right up these beautiful ellie jackson <laughs> earrings thank you so much thank and you. guys thanks again thank for you all very that much. you do thank, thank you, you. <laughs>
an electric kiln, it would just be a pinkish color and dull. And so that's bland. why it takes a lot of time. And all of this is natural paint, is that correct? Yes. Did you have the natural paint? Yes. Yeah. And then, then they use the yucca. I just brought a piece of yucca so I could show you. But uh, the paint brushes are these little tiny wow. yucca fibers. Well, I know that you are an expert on the Hopi pottery, and you have been asked by several for advice on books and stuff like that. Oh, yes. So with you bringing this in and these phenomenal, phenomenal items, what are you Dang. thinking of doing with them? I brought these in uh, to consign them, but uh, for the auction, you're talking? yes, yeah. for your yeah. auction. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think they do very well. I think they would, but you know, I've been having second thoughts because oh. Dee is such a dear person, dear friend to me, <laughs> that I think I'm going to just take these back home. So you're going to take them. those two are made by D. Yes. Okay. These what two about are these made four by here? Those four. I would, consider, I would consider selling. like to put those in auction, I, just to well. see what they yeah, do. These do are nice well. little pieces, so yes. um, yeah, they'll do well in the auction. Well, and I'm glad you decided now before we sell them, <laughs> and then we're trying to search for the buyer so that you can get them back. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, let's do some paperwork, and we'll get these put up in one of our next auctions. Okay, sure. All right, cool. Now, as he's filling out the paperwork, I'd like to kind of talk about uh, some of these pigments. This is the clay. Dee goes out. He lives at Kings Canyon. He'll go out in the washes, and he'll dig his own clay. So this clay comes from Mother Earth. And this is the white clay, yellow clay. The yellow will turn red. So this wow. piece was made from the yellow clay. And this is gray clay, which Dee made uh, these pieces with the gray clay. That and is so awesome. I didn't realize that. It's just an amazing process. The process from beginning to end can take hundreds of hours. And just the firing process takes eight to 10 hours. Wow. It will sit. This will bake in the fire for probably about eight hours. Well, we are going to be using more and more of your knowledge here at the Trading Post, so we appreciate you bringing these in, and I bet we'll be calling you well, yeah. for, for some more advice and information on different pieces of pottery. What Absolutely. Sure. It's nice to have a Hopi pottery expert in the neighborhood. Well, thank you. Ooh, thank that's... you so much. Oh, I just love you guys to death. Oh, thanks, Wayne. We like you, too. Thank you. I wouldn't use the word love quite yet, but... Uh... Yeah, well, because I didn't bring the chocolates. <laughs>I'm doing what? real good. What are you doing here in town? Oh, I was just heading up north, so I thought I'd stop by to see if you picked up anything that I that I that I collect. Like tokens. Like old trade tokens. Trade tokens. Um, let's see here. Uh, I I got this Indian Wells token right here. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. I do have this one. You have that one already. But this is a nice Indian trader. They were very popular yeah. usage on the reservation because of the minimal amount of coins available. Yeah. So they issued a lot of tokens. Sure. But you brought I'm looking some. for something like these. Okay, you know. what did you bring? Um, well, here's one from Hardyville, Arizona. Hardyville, okay. And it's, it's all ghosted out, there's nothing there left. And it was a Colorado port town in the, in the late 1860s. Wow. Um, and that token is like one of Arizona's oldest tokens. From the 1860s? From, from, the, from the late 1860s, post-Civil War. That's cool. And Mr. Hardy ran a toll road from Hardyville to the, to Prescott. Okay. In delivering supplies, and um, that token was good for one passage. It has like the it number says one number on there. It number one on it. Cool. And that token is unique. Yeah, that's that is, that cool. is unique. And here's another one from right here in Casa Grande. Casa Grande. Okay, Gilt Edge Saloon. The Gilt Edge Saloon. That's one of Arizona, that's one of Casa Grande's most famous old saloons. Sure. And um, that token dates. Pre 1914, as the saloon burned down yeah, in 1914. That's when the whole town burned down that's in 1914. Big, wow, the whole town. But, uh, but that token is like really special. It has saloon. It says Casa Grande, Arizona, spelled out. Yeah. It says good for one drink. Good for one. All drink. on one side. Yeah. And what makes that token good? really special. It has a picture of the Casa Grande ruins on the back, That's which is scarce for tokens. And what would one like this be worth? 
something like that would be like about 800 bucks. 800 bucks, 800 okay, wow. It could be more, you know, it, it yeah. really depends on how bad the person wants it. Yeah, and the condition and, and the everything. Condition. Sure, sure. What and else you got there? Here is a real historical one from Charleston AT, which stands for Arizona Territory. Arizona Territory, sure, that and, Charleston. And Mr. Ayers, the proprietor of that saloon, um, Ran a saloon in Charleston, which is like well known as a as a as a town where the where the cattle wrestlers, sure. the th cattle thieves, they all hung out in, in Charleston because it was close to the Mexican border. And it was right next to Tombstone, right? It was about like ten miles. Or ten so? miles or so from sure. Tombstone. Okay. And uh, Mr. Ayers was also an informant for the Wells Fargo. You know, he would like listen to the conversation of the cattle wrestlers, and okay. if anything that he picked up, sure, he would he would tell his, um, uh, the detective, whose name was Fred Dodge, yeah. about any happenings that may, that may occur. And is this a rare token? That is a very rare token that's only like one of two known. One of two known, wow. And I really had to pay a lot because I always, always wanted to Charleston. That was- What would one like this be worth? I then? paid 13500 $13, Wow, that's that is, amazing. That is, that is, a, that is a really, really that's great a, token. That's a cool very piece historic. of history right there. Exactly. Here's another cool piece of history. This is from the Campbell and Hatch Saloon. I've heard of that. Right. Why have I heard of it? Because that's where Morgan Earp was shot. Okay. And that was Wyatt's brother. Yeah. And um, he was shot playing pool with his brother mm -hmm. inside of the Campbell and Hatch Saloon in March of 1882. Okay, so this, right after the whole OK Corral thing. It was about five months after the whole OK Corral. Yeah. And there was still a lot of, a lot of animosity. And, and the assassin saw Morgan and Wyatt playing pool, mm -hmm. and, he, uh, and he, his intended target was for Wyatt Earp, but he sure. shot his brother and he died like On a accident. few hours, you know. And what would one like that bring? Uh, like that. Um, I got lucky, I, I paid 600 for that, but something like yeah, that would be like twelve, fifteen hundred dollars Twelve, fifteen hundred. It's not that, that rare like the other ones, there's probably about five, five okay. known, but the historical, it, significance of that token is this token may have been in the saloon when absolutely Morgan was killed absolutely that, it was probably amazing. in that saloon you probably heard the gunshots and everything <laughs> yeah, I, that's know, an, because it only could only talk huh exactly uh, yeah yeah now would you want to sell any of these oh no no no, <laughs> no. you just no. brought them in to tease me yes I, <laughs> okay. yes yes all right now i know what kind of tokens you're looking for exactly you come in asking for exactly them. you don't want the common ones like i've got you want the the really I want the real, I'm sure. kind of an advanced collector. Sure, so. sure. Well, thanks, Bob. I appreciate you sure bringing thing. those in and showing me. That's, sure that's thing, really anytime. Neat. Thank you. Now you know what to look for. Thanks. <laughs>
Um, it was neat. It's really neat to me, especially me, because we knew Scott growing up, built saddles for my family and a lot of cowboys throughout the state of Arizona and all over. But this saddle was built, it was ordered by and built for Bill Owens. That is so. the world famous artist Bill Owen, am I correct? That's correct, yeah. How did you get and this so, beauty? Well, this, this came through a friend of mine, Tom Bill Johnson. He acquired it from Bill. And uh, so I ended up getting it for my wife to ride for a little bit. She's gone to a, a little different type saddle, so we want to see it go somebody special. But it's really neat to us because we knew Scott and we knew Bill really well. I worked for Bill when I was a kid and really a neat guy. And now, means, where yeah. do you guys ranch at? We ranch about 50 miles northwest of Prescott on the ORO Ranch. So uh, as you know, there's a lot of history there and we have our own remuda of horses. We, we run about 120 gildings to help us through the ranch with the spring and fall wagon. And, so it's pretty good testing grounds. And I can tell that you are passing down your love and passion for the Western lifestyle to your beautiful daughter. Yeah. But what do you do, Sutton? I rope and I do the barrels. I do a little bit of everything. Yep. Well, I heard that you are an amazing cowgirl. I am so proud of you. She's well, good help on the ranch, too. Yeah. That is wonderful. I want yeah. to thank you guys well, so thanks. much for allowing the trading post to, I mean, have this amazing piece yeah. of our Western history. Well, thank you guys, too. Appreciate it. We had a great time at the Old West Show in Mesa, Arizona this weekend, and sometimes we wind up bringing home more goodies than we left with. Uh, don't tell Bobby about that, but a couple of great items that came home with us this weekend is this wonderful cowboy saddle, handmade cowboy saddle that was actually owned by the artist Bill Owen, and he rode it on numerous occasions. It was his personal saddle that he rode on the ranches when he would go get photographs and material for his artwork. Another item that came home with us this weekend is this pair of shafts right here. What is so interesting about this pair of shaps, you might ask? Well, I'm sure you guys have heard of Shania Twain. On the back cover of her first ever platinum album, she is wearing these very same shaps. And when you think of a Shania Twain song, what do you think of? Probably any man of mine. She is wearing these very same shaps in that video in numerous shots. We are excited have these items here at Western Trading Post.